All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Mommy and Me. You know, it's Monday, so I am Brie Renee. And I miss Renee. And we appreciate every single one of you guys never missing a Monday with us. Um, if you have not already done so, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to share these videos. And let us know below, like, what was your favorite episode so far and or any topics you want us to address. We want to make sure we hit in all the topics here. So, um... This one, I couldn't wait to get to this one. <laughs> so today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the woes or struggles you might have endured um, as a black mom raising a black daughter or a lighter complexion child. I think um, or a biracial daughter. A biracial daughter, but well, in this, in this, we want. I want to cover everything under the realm of colorism and skin tone and that in our community we i think there's so many stigmas and there's so many like messed up ways of thinking that we have within our community right first and foremost before we even get into any of this i do want to acknowledge as a light-skinned woman i do have a privilege in a lot of settings in america whether it be media whether it be sometimes with black men and I don't feel like I have to apologize for it, but I am sorry that that is the way the world works. And I, I never leaned into that privilege knowingly. I might have received benefits from that privilege unknowingly, but I never carried myself like, oh, I'm a light-skinned girl and, or lighter is, is, is better. I, it was quite the opposite. Growing up, because I had a darker-skinned mother and everyone in our family is dark-skinned, I wanted to be dark-skinned. I felt like I was less black or less cool because I wasn't dark. I, I tried to change a lot of the features that I had that made me more, I guess, exotic is what they would call it. I had... My, I have freckles, but I had even more pigmented freckles when I was younger. And I don't even think you knew this, but when we lived up off, um, off Snapfinger, I went out into the sun. Remember we had the hammock? Mm -hmm. I've laid in the sun with, I read in this like Cosmo. Remember, we used to have magazines. Y'all probably don't even remember. We used to have magazines like Cosmo and all those type of stuff. And they were talking about natural ways of bleaching your skin or natural ways of bleaching blemishes. So it's, it's, it talked about lemon juice and um, this concoction that it had. And we had all the stuff in the house. So I went through the, through the house and I made the concoction with the lemons. And I laid out in the sun to lighten my freckles on my face and it worked but it burnt the hell out of my face like <laughs> but i did all of that because i thought freckles made me look more mixed or freckles made me look more non-black and i didn't feel like anything other than a black woman because i'm raised by nothing but black, but black women my entire family on your side is black um, I live in one of the blackest cities in America, which is Atlanta. So I didn't understand. And, and most of my, all of my friends were black and none of my friends treated me like I was anything other than black. And that's wonderful. And I'm glad that that part set in. It's unfortunate that we live in a world that they make a difference in color, in the color of your skin. It, you treat, I mean, let's face it as a black woman, as a truly black woman, that has always been an issue with America. We've always been treated differently because of the color of the skin. If you know, as even back in slavery, the light-skinned ones got to, you know, work in the house and the dark-skinned ones, you know, worked in the field. That's because that's the way the society perceived us. It, it was perceived that somehow or another, uh, you were better if you're light-skinned, something about you makes you better, and that's not true. Um, and I didn't want, now, let's, let's be very, very candid. The only reason why you ended up light-skinned was because- Light-skinned. Light-skinned. Not uh, did. Light-skinned is because of the, the, the selection or the, 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 the donors that were available. You know? So you didn't go out as a dark-skinned woman, like, I'm going to choose 
a, a biracial man no. or another race of man because I want my child to be mixed or no. I don't like the color of my skin. No. Because I feel like a lot of people assume that as well because I'm light skin. Like, oh, her mother must have hated herself. So she went in and I love chose myself. a sperm donor that was not black. But I, it's like, fact of the matter is, how many black people, men, you know, going to donate there sperm? Were, there were none. There were very, there were none. Yeah. That, that, there were none to choose from yeah. in my selection. So with that being said, now there may have been some other places, but I didn't have any to choose from. So I picked the best pick of the litter uh, from what I had to choose from. And as a result, you came out the way you came out. You know? So and for clarity, I am Iranian and black. My father is of Middle Eastern descent. However, I've never, ever, ever, ever met this man or anyone on that side of his family. So I feel like if I walked around and paraded myself to be anything other than a black woman, I would feel like, I think that would make me a sellout. I think that would make me a complete fraud. Like, and then I think that we shun people when they do lean into that or parade around like um, they're better than because they're biracial or they- Hell no. I, that's what I'm saying. So I, I don't understand the hate. And you just said something too, that I don't think you meant it in a way to, to harm, but dark skinned people say this often. You said, I'm a truly black person. So are you saying because you fully dark skinned no, that you blacker no, than me? No, no, no. I'm not saying that because I'm blacker than you. I'm saying, and if you go through the genealogy of, of who we are, we are so, we are, we are such a rainbow of people. I mean, I have French in my background. I have German. She I did, have we Asian. Did the DNA. You had like 3 I have so European. much other ethnicities in my bloodline to where as I'm a complete rainbow of a lot of people and a lot, a lot of different cultures. And that could really come from and, probably the master yeah, I don't, I don't know where it comes from. I'm just telling you what my makeup is. And, and I'm sure it's because somebody from this race married somebody here and somebody had a kid here and somebody married a kid there and somebody had a kid here and it just kind of all came together and voila, here I am. Uh, but I'm saying that I, that comment was simply meant to, there was, when I came up, there were no other ethnic groups around other than black or white folks and there were no immediately the immediate white folks or anybody else in our in our mix. So therefore, I was brought up only as a authentic, I should say, black woman. You know, there was that wasn't a question as to whether or not I was black. Now, like again, I said my bloodline, I I got a lot of stuff in my bloodline. You know. Do you feel like I was raised as an authentic black person yes. or a black woman? Yes, you were raised as a black as you were raised as a black woman as I know how I be feeling to like raise a black woman. Y'all don't see my black ass mama. You know, like and, not and, even and, complexion, but just everything that a black mama embodies, you are that. So it's like I don't get how I can identify with any other experience other than a black woman. And I don't and I and I hate that you had to even even now I hate that you have to experience that or, or even being questioned as to whether or not you're truly an authentic black woman or not black woman or whatever because at the end of the day you are my child you came from me I am a black woman and anybody in the world that questions that or don't like it or got something to say come see me what do you think makes somebody a black person is it is it the mom? The culture. Is it the dad? Is well, it a well, mixture? Well, scientists say, scientists say that it's the father. The father carries the, the bloodline, the genes. You know, that's who you are. That's what they say. But the way we were raised, and see, here's another thing. In our culture. You think the Middle Easterns will accept me? Hell no, they won't <laughs> accept you because you got too much of me in you. <laughs> Uh, you're not submissive enough for the Middle Eastern culture. Oh, yeah. You, no. don't, you, you don't dance by their tune. You don't, you know, so I say that, I, 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 I say that only because of the culture and the way that we were raised, not necessarily because of your bloodline, because if we go strictly by the bloodline, you are not African-American. You are considered to be Middle Eastern. 
because yeah. that's who your father is. But I, you are African American because of the culture and because of the way you were raised and the environment that you were brought up in. I think that I just, and this is not to my own bias, but I do feel like that it really should be based off of the mom because the mom is the one who does most of the raising and carries you and, and shapes a lot of your development. So like, I have had mixed, it kind of depends on whoever raised you. Honestly, it don't matter whether you got, cause I have mixed friends who have white moms who were raised solely by their black dads and they act way more black than they act white. I have friends who have uh, white moms who have black dads, but were, were raised by their white moms and they act like white women. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, and, and it just depends on what cultural norms you were raised under. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cultural environment that I think truly dictates who you are. But to that, it's some white people in the middle of Minnesota somewhere who listen to nothing but rap music and they subscribe to our culture and they think that that makes them black and that does not no, make you black. No, that doesn't make them black. It, you, mm -hmm. you don't have a black experience. But with the black experience, why do you feel like we still, to this day, have an issue with uniting with one another or accepting or loving one another just simply based off our complexion? Like, people were really saying, I mean, I have thick skin, so it's nothing they could say. And I know who I am, thankfully. I knew who I was before I got on the internet, so the internet can't tell me who I am. But people in the comments were saying very like, I'm like, wow, it's people that really think this way. Because they're closed-minded and they're ignorant. Unfortunately, we still live in a world where people are just ignorant. They have not been introduced or taught that there are more ways to do things in this world and that their people are different. And, you know, God made all of us, whether we are white, yellow, red, purple, green, and damn it, we should all get along. But it's taken a lot of us a little longer to catch up and buy into that. You know, people, they're, 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 they're small. When, when you run across people that have those type of comments online, they're really small-minded people. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know any better. Those are people you pray for. Those are people that, you know, we try to help. And when you can't help them, just leave them where they are. Yeah. You know, they're just small-minded people. You know, any, for anybody to treat you any other way than whoever, that's like, in a sense, People not willing to accept people for their, their, their gender, their, 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 again, their race, just because. I mean, accepting you as a black woman, what, who, 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 that's who you identify with, that's who you are. Why does that, why does that bother some other people? That you're light skin, oh, you're not truly a black woman because your skin is a little fairer? I mean, I know people who have, who her mother or fathers or both black, both and, black lighter and light than me. and right are lighter than you, and they're still yeah. black, and they're not questioned. So I mean, you know, what difference does it make? Yeah. I think we just live in a world where people are just ignorant. They don't know how to get out of their own way, and just accept the fact that every people are going to be different. That's like people not accepting someone who who doesn't identify with their gender, their sex orientation. I mean, that's who they are. I didn't accept it. You know, if, if it doesn't fit you, then move the hell on. Yeah. If, if that's not who you are, what you want to be involved or engaged in or be around, get the hell on. Right. And I think it's hard because it's like, I don't know. I don't even claim biracial. Like, I don't even go around people. Like, even when I check applications or everything I've ever filled out, I just put black or African-American. I don't even identify as biracial because I've never had any other racial experience other than black. And that's fine. Like I wasn't raised where, like if I had a, got, a, got to spend summers with my dad and knew that culture or, you know what I mean? Then I can say, okay, I'm biracial. I have right. bicultural I experiences. Right. I don't have that. But okay. I think that, like you said, I think that the society is just still, unfortunately hasn't caught up with the how fast people are evolving and right. the decisions that people have made but with that like you had me 30 something years ago like 32 yeah almost how, 33 okay you ain't gotta keep telling everybody my okay, age right, no, I got you. 30 something we said okay. something okay they imply okay so what 
what do you think or what are some things that you experienced as a dark-skinned woman that was raising a lighter child like were you ever concerned or worried or what were some of the things that you had to face I knew that there were going to be challenges because you were a lighter I knew as what a parent challenges? that you were going to face some natural biases um, you were going to encounter girls in school who were going to dislike you just because you were light skin. You were going to be picked on at some point in your life because you didn't look like the norm. Um, you were going to be talked about. You were going to be judged unfairly. I knew that, you know, life wasn't going to be fair. So as a parent, it was my responsibility to prepare you for that, not allow you to drift off into this vainness because you know, you were constantly being told that you were different, you were beautiful, you were light-skinned, you, you know, your hair texture was different. Okay, all well, then good, we knew that, but let's not get caught up into that because the world, you know, that wasn't going to sustain you in life. You know, your beauty has done you well, you know, you've capitalized on it, but that wasn't going to be enough for you to, to, su to survive in this world. And my greatest fear, and it should be every parent's greatest fear or concern, is that when the good Lord calls me home, whether it's my time or it's prematurely, whether or not I have prepared you to survive in this world and whatever that looks like. You know, uh, oftentimes you would be in the car and every second I turned around, not only because it was distracting, but you would always have the, 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 the visor down looking in the mirror. And that ticked me the hell off. Oh, you hated you know? it. Oh, she hated it. Oh, get God out of the mirror. Yeah, Jesus. Get, get, get out of the mirror. I mean, you know what you look like, okay? You need to touch your makeup, touch up stuff. Fine, but get out of it. Quit staring I at yourself. I didn't even wear makeup. I just was admiring my beauty. Okay, admire yourself. Or maybe but, fixing my hair or something. Okay, it didn't even matter. Get out, get out of the mirror, okay? Let's spend less time out of the mirror and more time figuring out how to survive in this world. Because... You know, granted, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, you got into some uh, girls didn't like you because of the way you looked in school, right? Girls didn't like you because Why they, your hair curl like that? Right. They didn't like you because they thought that... You think you cute. Absolutely. It's like, no, <laughs> you think I'm cute. You know, and, and, and a lot of them were intimidated by you and your looks. Yeah. And to me... Okay, that was something that God gave you, but we needed a little bit more. We needed brains behind the beauty. Yeah. And I never wanted you to grow up with that dumb blonde syndrome. Yeah. You know, you although you were never blonde, but I never wanted you to be, you know, all looks and no brains. Yeah. You know, and so that was important to me as a parent. You know, I needed to teach you some survivor skills. Well, I'm grateful. I think I got a good mix of both, and I learned how to, like, now, I, I, because you didn't allow me to rely on my looks or my beauty, I did have to learn to be funny or smart and I, have that personality. All, all of that wasn't important to me, that you've been funny. You know, what was being I'm smart I'm saying I had to lie, rely on more than just looks. Yeah. And, and I focused more so on being a total package and what I could control. And so that's why when people give me compliments on my energy or my gifts, that's or my talent or how I make them feel, that means so much more to me than somebody telling me I'm pretty. Don't get me wrong, I still kind of want to hear it, especially from somebody I like. But when people compliment me on like, your energy is just so amazing, or I love being around you, you're such a pleasure to work with, that feels greater because that's what I can control. I didn't do what, like, what I look like. That yeah. was between you, my daddy, and God. Yeah, So absolutely. like what I, present to the world the energy that I put out that is what I can control absolutely so that's what I'm most proud and that's, of and those some of the those are some of the qualities to me as a parent that we we need to be able we we should teach our children you know you know do unto others as you as you have the bible says again do unto others as you have them do unto you teach your children the importance of that uh, that saying you know, teach your children the importance of getting an education. Teach your children the importance of being kind to people, being understanding, listening. You know, even as part of my dictatorship, teaching you these values in life, to me, was more important than me teaching you how to take advantage of your beauty. Yeah. You know? 
um, that wasn't going to get you very far in life. And I know that. Did you face any, so I know what you were worried about on my end, but did you face any scrutiny or judgment or backlash for being a dark-skinned woman with this light-skinned baby? There was ever no, no, no scrutiny or backlash. And, or, or, and frankly, had there been, I would have simply approached it in a, in a way that just simply tell them that, you know, to go to hell. I, I didn't care. Well, you care. had some people make smart mar remarks. Well, yeah, I mean, people, That's I was going to say, was people, like? people made remarks, you know, I, be, I was called the babysitter or the nanny, you know, uh, uh, you know, the caretaker. And then, you know, when, the, when, when they realized that I was actually the mom or, or then it, you know, it changed. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't know. Or she might, you know, she must be by race. She must be. And so that type of, um, conversations were had. Um, but I, I, I would always take it with a grain of salt, you know, and just, and, and chuckle it off because, you know, again, I ran across one more ignorant ass person. You know, just another. They just walk up to you and say, "Oh, are you the nanny?" I've had I've had people say that to me. You know, when you would be out, we I would be out in the park with you, and you know, wanted to know how long I've been sitting for you, or how long I've been <laughs> keeping you, or taking care of you, and you know, as you know, as I say that I was your caregiver. I was like, since I had her, you know, since I gave birth to her. Um, so you know, it's. I knew just, you with my mom. I knew I belonged to somebody rich. Well, and hey, they, whoever you are. <laughs> Come get it, okay? You owe me, yeah. for the most part. But um, it didn't bother me. I didn't care. I, you know, you got to understand. I've never been a type of person, you know, I, I, I care about what people think to a degree about me or my reputation because it's important to me that people understand that I am who I am. I'm not the person that's going to put on any airs or going to sugarcoat it or, or going to try and give you the, you know, the, the good and warmy fuzzy feeling about it. I'm just going to tell you to you like I, like I, I know it. And, and it's up to you to receive it that way, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that. And see, that's what's wrong in my opinion with society. You know, we, we all like to hide behind things and not tell people or be honest and open and authentic with people about, things, situation in life, and we give people fucked up thoughts and, and people come, kids come up with, you know, fucked up ideas about the way life is, and, and that's unfortunate, you know? So I really didn't give a damn about people's opinion about me being a dark-skinned woman and a, with a light-skinned baby. Most, most of the people that I, opinion I do vary, I do care about and uh, value, Always the one to say, hey, she's just a light-skinned version of you, Shalifa. You people, know? People do be saying that. Yeah, I say she looks just like you, but, you know, she's just lighter. I feel like I got a little bit more, like, uh, pizzazz. Mm. It has nothing to do with the complexion, just mm. my own uniqueness. Whatever. <laughs> now, but why do you think that complexion is still so important in our community, like, to this day? See, because you, you got to understand... But complexion, it, it was like people are so in awe with complexion. You know, even, even white men in slavery always wanted the light-skinned women to work in the house, you know. And I said that before. It's like, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's the forbidden fruit, you know. It's the forbidden Something. I think that they're, the white men wanted light skinned women to work in the house because they favored more of them. Like it was more appealing for them to look at. Like it was like the lighter is brighter type of mindset. And then they kept the darker out. But the, the caveat to that is because it was the forbidden fruit, they often wanted... The they wanted the darker women. That's why they made the... How they got the lighter ones. Yeah. They, they were out raping and they having babies with the darker ones. So yeah. so the, the, the we were the forbidden fruit, period. Yeah. But it was just the, the fact that we, the, we, we, we produced a lighter version. Right. And that means, you know, some of the black men gravitated towards the lighter version. They wasn't so, you know... It was okay to go with the lighter version, not so much the darker version, because they would be accepted more in society for having the lighter version. Oh wow! 
Yeah. I never even really thought about it like that. Yeah, I mean, that's black literally men, why black. Because I was gonna ask that why do black men sometimes favor the lighter skin women? Because they, they I mean, be accepted more in society, they, but dating, you know, a lighter closer version. Closer to white. Closer to white. And you know what? That's the reason why I love to see a black man with a black woman. Yeah. Me too. You know, it's like okay. You got it. Okay, you didn't. You didn't fall in that trap. Okay, you didn't get wealthy, and now you instead, you know, a black woman was good enough to get your ass to where you are. But now that you've gotten there, you, you got to have a white woman on your arm now to say that I've arrived, you know, or I've made it, or uh, now I can be acceptable in society because I got a I got a white girl instead of a black girl. Now, now, granted, I don't give a damn. You love who you love. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just telling you my perspective of why black men don't feel as if they've made it or arrived until they go get a white woman. And you know, sometimes they date. So, so I've heard some black men make it and they like, well, I'm getting me an Asian or a white or another race, Hispanic, because when I was poor, black women didn't want you, want me. And it's like, well, Negro, neither did them white or Hispanic. They didn't want you when you was poor then either. But then, but then, but guess what I've also heard too. When a black man go get a white woman, most of the time he getting one that the white man didn't even want. Oh, that's T. And sometimes we ain't want to be the truth be told. Truth be told. And, <gasps> and, and, and when, they, when white women get black men, you know, they're getting the rejects of a black woman. Yeah. You know, he can, he can baffle you with that bullshit that he couldn't <laughs> baffle a black woman with. You know, so it works. And no, I, I, and, and, let, and, let, it, and, no. let, and let, it, let, let it be known. I'm not knocking it. Be with who you want to be with. Who going? Whoever going to buy your bullshit? Yeah, whoever going to buy your bullshit, you know, be happy with it. That's yeah. on you. You know, truly, that's on you. I'm not saying black women shouldn't date white men. White men shouldn't date black women. White black men shouldn't have white women. Whatever floats your boat. Cause truth be told, she doesn't encourage me to try dating outside Absolutely. of my race too. Absolutely. What whoever float, whatever. Hey, if a black man can't do it for you and you can't find, and I think you can find some black brothers out there. I think there are some good black brothers out there that would make you a hell of a husband, and a very nice husband, the kind that you want. But I also think there may be some white men out there too. Now I'm not. I'm, I've encouraged you to date whoever, whatever. You I desire. love me a black man. I ain't gonna lie. I like my hot dogs burnt. Okay. <laughs> that means you want them really dark. That's fine. I just don't want no raw hot dog. Okay. That's fine. No pink meat. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. To each his own. Yeah. To each his own. I do have dreams of being with a beautiful black man. He, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice, like okay. they say. Okay. That's fine. And I want to have me some beautiful brown babies. That's fine. Yeah. Do you have preference on like what complexion your you did you have a preference on what complexion I was? No, I didn't know how I, I didn't have a damn clue what complexion you were gonna be. I know, but did you have hopes? Cause some people No, no. there's some dark skinned women that be like, I don't they even date even though they're dating uh black men, they still choose light skinned men because they wanna even out the tone. No, negative. No, I didn't have that. I did I wanted a healthy baby. I didn't get you know, and I honestly thought that your complexion would be darker because of my genes. Mm. I actually thought it, you, you know, you probably would be darker, you know. Should have cranked them up a little bit. But you came out looking like Miss Daisy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> you came out looking like driving Miss Daisy. How do we move forward? Like as as black we have, people, as we've got to be open-minded. We've got to get out of our own way. We've got to be open-minded, and we've got to realize that the world is constantly evolving, and we've got to evolve with it. Do you believe this theory that some people say um, that in like a couple decades everybody will be like mixed, and they're trying to get all of us to keep mating until? Everyone looks like my color. That shit will never happen. And if anybody dumb enough to even put that out there, I'm, you know, they're too dumb to even realize it. That'll never happen. Yeah. That'll never happen. You know, you, you, you waste your energy thinking about something else. Because that's some dumb shit. <laughs> you waste your energy thinking about something else. You know? Raise your children to be strong, individual. Don't get caught up so much in what they look like, the color of their skin. 
Now, you know, the sad thing about it is just like you were being picked on as a light-skinned kid, there's a lot of kids that get picked on because they are darker or they're dark-skinned or their, their hair is not the same texture, you know, or their hair, you know, is a little, a little different from, you know, the light-skinned girls or, you know, whatever. So there's that, that being picked on by the color, because of the color of your skin is a double-edged sword. Yeah, it does happen to both sides. And that's yeah. why I be saying, I know by definition, colorism is lighter skin people getting preferential treatment over dark skin people. However, like the dictionary, Webster, and so many other words have evolved with time, I feel like because this issue is now so prevalent in our communities and we've had so many discussions on lighter and darker women and men, because light-skinned men get it bad, light-skinned, dark-skinned, light-skinned black men get it bad too. They looked at as weaker. They're looked at as not as strong. They're looked at as less desirable. Now, it was, they had their moment with the Shamar Morris and the Princess, but then they started to die out. And now a lot of women be like, they only want to date dark-skinned men. So it's an issue that goes both ways in our communities, right? So with that, I feel like the definition of colorism should also evolve to say, preferential treatment or hate amongst one's own group based on the complexion of their skin. I feel like that definition should change and with the definition changing, all of it should be labeled as ignorant at the end of the day because to hate somebody else that's a part of your own race, and it not, it's not just black people. It's not just black people, which is sad. I studied abroad in Costa Rica. Costa Rica is right next to Ecuador and Nicaragua. Nicaraguans are darker. They get, they're looked at as like the niggas of the, that cultural region. Then the lighter Costa Ricans who look more like lighter like Mexicans um, or tanned, they, they get, prefer like it's, it's a prevalent Asians. Asians get it real bad. There are darker Asians that get mistreated and the lighter ones are more preferred. I feel like colorism should be the, the ignorance portrayed amongst one racial group based on complexion. And I think that it and, should all be that eradicated. It, that ignorance has been prevalent through the beginning of time. Do you feel like it's just always going to be that way? Unless there's an atomic bomb and this motherfucker <laughs> is blown to pieces and we start all over, it probably will be there that way until the end of time. And so do you waste your energy fighting to change it? Hmm. I don't know how far that's going to get you. Or do you learn to live within the boundaries? Probably the best thing for you. You know, or do you put a, you know, turn a blind ear to it, a blind eye to it? Not very smart thing to do. So, I'm a do something about it type of person. Yeah, you want to do something about it. And so, I've always been and a do something about it type of person, but at some point you get you get tired of trying to save the world. Yeah, you don't have to save the world though. You That's what tired, I learned. You I get feel tired like of trying each to save of us have a gift or each of us have a space that we're operating in and and the doing something about it is using that space to bring about change in any way that means possible. For me, I am a, a podcaster, a YouTuber, a speaker. So I'm going to use my and voice many, and how, yeah, to bring I, about change. I don't, I don't object to that, but just don't lose your damn voice trying to bring about change when people <laughs> don't want to change because you get burnout, you get, you know, and you begin to wonder why are you doing this when folks ain't changing? So what I'm telling you is put your energy in something that's going to be more rewarding because trying to change folks and their mentalities when they're set in their ways, that's a hard pill. That's a, that's a hard pill. Ignorance is something that people have to outgrow themselves. Mm. People gotta grow, people have to outgrow ignorance themselves. Okay. Ignorance is taught, but some of them have to be untaught it, but in, in their own time, they gotta outgrow it. No? What do you think, what is your definition of what does it mean to be a black woman to you? What does it mean? It's a badge of honor to me to be a black woman. It really is. What I am grateful that I'm a black woman and not another race. I really am. 
And I hope that someone from the other race feels that way about them being who they are. I'm not saying being of another race is bad or, you know, it's, it's, they shouldn't take pride in it. I'm saying, for me, that it's a badge of honor to be a black woman. Yeah. You see, you know, being a black woman means that I'm a survivor. It means I'm a thriver. It means, I, you know, I, 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 you, you beat me down. You talked about me. You drugged me through the mud. You know, you, you, you've done shit to me. You know, even in, even in my personal life right now, having, dealing with some things that I'm dealing with personally that I, you know, I'm not going to get into, but it's like I know I'm being treated this way because I'm a black woman to some degree. Had I been a white woman, you know, being treated this way, the shit never would have even been an issue. It wouldn't have come, it wouldn't have, nothing would have happened in my situation. But because I'm a black woman, you know, you looked upon as if, you know, you, 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 you're not supposed to rise above because you're a black woman, you know. Because you're a black woman, there's no way, you know, you're supposed to be successful. That Because you're a black woman, no way you're supposed to be educated. Because you're a black woman, you know, your, your credit, not, you're not supposed to have, you know, you know, Rolls Royce. Who said you, you know, niggas be, could because, do that? You, yeah, because you're a black woman, you're not supposed to be able to build the houses that you live in. Because you're a black woman, you know, you're not supposed to be able to drive Rolls Royces and have certain jewelry and, you know, and have certain things and have money and have, you know, have, have, have the education to know how to do it. Because you're a black woman, you're not supposed to do that. Look at you did it. But I'm proud of the fact that I've, I've, been, I've been able to accomplish whatever I want to accomplish in this world because I'm a black woman. Because a black woman is the one who instilled in me the, 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 the notion to think that I could and I can and yeah. I have. So yeah, I'm proud to be a black woman. Me Very too. proud to be a black woman. And anybody that hate the fact that they're a black woman, oh well, I'm sorry. You didn't get the same teachings I got. Yeah. Because had you got the same teachings that I got, I, I tell you, like my grandmama used to tell me, you know, I turn around and let you kiss my big black ass, you know, <laughs> and that's just how my grandmama felt about the world. If you didn't like it, my grandmama would drop her straws in a minute and tell you to kiss her big black ass. You know, Fannie Mae just didn't play that way, you know, and so because of that, I am a proud black woman. Yeah, I'm proud. And you know what? It's unfortunate that being a proud black woman intimidates a lot of other people in this world. Some black, some not black. They're intimidated. You know, and for whatever reason, I don't know. I guess because they were never taught to be confident and love who they are. You see, I, I'm, I'm okay with me. You know, I can look in the mirror, I like me. I like who looks back at me when I look in the mirror. I don't, I don't want my skin tone to change, I don't want, anything about me to change. I like being a black woman. And if I die and come back, I want God to bring me back as a black woman or a black man. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. I love being, I love everything about being a black woman from, like you said, the the gumption we have yeah. to show up as ourselves, the, the confidence that we instill, not only in like that you've passed down to me, but that we as black women share with each other. Like we could give each other a little black, like, okay, shoes. You know, that is like, that's like, I see you sis. Like that is real black. And we don't even have to say nothing. We know just from that one word, what it means. Yeah. And we just pour more and love I, and, into and each you know, other. And I, and I want to, and I, and I try to instill that even in my granddaughter. I want her to look in the mirror. I don't give a damn what nobody says to her. Look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm a beautiful, strong black woman. Yeah. I, I am proud of who I am. And the you know, and that not we do. let anybody change that mindset of hers. Don't let anybody make her feel that she's less than because of the color of her skin. Yeah. You see, other generations went through that shit, you know, and I'm I'm not going through it. Yeah. And I love that as black women, we are the queens of turning nothing into something. Absolutely. Like, we can go in the kitchen, it might not be no, it might look like it ain't my grandma, done, but my we gonna make Fan something out my of it. My grandmother, Fannie Mae, was the queen of that. Yeah. My grandmother, you know, she used to, she, she, she would go in the kitchen, like you say, I look at the refrigerator, and hell, ain't nothing in there but some water and some flour, but shit, I come back an hour later, she got a, 
full course meal on the table. And I'm looking like, what the hell? You know, where'd that come from? And she's sitting there. My grandma didn't, eat, didn't believe in eating with forks and spoons and shit. My grandma ate all her meals with her hand, you know? And I laugh about that now. You know, she'd go in and cook a pot of collard greens, and she'd sit there and eat her collard greens with her hand and her cornbread. You know, she'd eat her breakfast, you know, in the morning with her grits and her, her bacon and, you know, her, her bread, and she'd slop it all up there together, and she'd eat it, and then she'd have her cup of coffee. And she didn't put cream in her coffee. My grandma used to drink her coffee black. She'd take her coffee, and it'd be piping hot. She'd pour a little bit on the saucer, and she'd sip it out of the saucer. I used to be then cooled it off. And, you know, I, I just laugh about that now, but that's what she was. You know, she made something out of nothing. She made meals out of nothing. And we are, as black women, we are the creators of everything cool. Culture, hair, fashion, like nails, everything. They First they call it ghetto, and then they mock it. Absolutely. Then they want to be like us. Yeah. From from even lips now and... and even, our, even our natural, curly voluptuous bodies yeah curves. you know they first we were we, we we weren't fashionable we didn't look good now they want to go out and get the ass shots just like us now mm -hmm. you know god gave us big boobs now now they want to go out and get they had to go out and get those injected to be like us you know now our lips our full lips you know now they had to go out and get full lips then we had big beautiful eyes and now you know they they're going back and you know they're getting surgery so their eyes can look like ours you know so you know, I'm 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 We're grateful. We're the originators. Oh yeah, I'm grateful that folks want to look like me. But oftentimes, as the originators, you don't get the credit and the love or, and that you deserve. They give it to the copiers, and that happens in entertainment. That happens with fashion. You know, you got big, you got black businesses that make and create new fashion all the time, and then these bigger other companies like. I ain't gonna say no names, but these fast fashion brands go out and reproduce and steal it from and them. And steal it from and, but, them. But but then here's the thing. And make more money off of right, it. Right, than right, right. And then but then they hire our creators. They hire the fashion icons to come and create for them. But they don't. The, the creators don't get the credit, but the companies do. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All we get is the name and the recognition and the support from each other. But they don't want to pay us for what, the support. Absolutely. That we bring absolutely, to these brands. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So I'm proud, like you said, I'm proud to be a black a black woman. I love everything about uh, black women and black men. Mm -hmm. I love the strength that black men have. I love the confidence that black men have. The way black men smell, the way the the sun glisten off your skin, Lord. Ooh. I don't Chocolate. know about the smell. Now some of them, you know, I ain't gonna go as far as say I love the smell of all of them. Not all of them, but the ones with good hygiene. One of them good hygiene and a good smelling cologne. And a nice full beard. And a good oh smelling cologne. Oh, God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Don't forget the cologne. The cologne. Yeah. The shea butter. Okay. Well, all right. If you were to be attracted to black men, what would you think you would be most attracted to? Now, not, I have always, I've always been attracted to black men. A well-groomed black man. Ooh, and a black man in a suit. Yeah. Mm. A well-groomed mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. man. I mean, the guys that I dated in my early years, you know, uh, I used to date this one in high school, and uh, oh, I thought he was finer than wine. Oh my God, I thought this guy, but I'm so glad God did not let me settle with him on the word to do. But he was bow-legged and had a nice physique, and you know, he was, he was a good looking guy. You know, I used to date this other guy. He was a tall, dark guy, had facial hairs back then. You know, he was young, but you know, he had facial hairs, and you know, was, he used to be a basketball player in his day, you know, and he was a tall guy. I mean, I like a nice, well-groomed brother. Really, really. And Did you like, do you, you know, me and Granny had the same taste. We like our men black like the mailbox. Nah, I don't want, I don't, I don't necessarily care about how black, black they black. are. Yeah, she like them really black. I, I don't care about the color of their skin tone, you know. I, my, my grandson is fairly bright. Um, and I want him he, to grow up to be. You think my color? Mm, a he little might darker. Be a little, he a little bit darker. Yeah, but and I want him to grow up to be a fine black man. You know, a well groomed black man. It's time for for the record. Do you have any for the records today? For the record, I'm not racist. <laughs> I don't give a damn who you love. Who you want to be with, that's up to you. You know, I, I'm not telling black men don't date white women. I'm not telling 
White men don't date black women. You know, you date whoever you want to date. I'm just saying, in my opinion, the reason why black men gravitate towards white women because it was looked upon for many, many years as the forbidden fruit. And that's my take on that. You know? For the record, I'm black. That's what I wanted to say. For the record, I'm black, okay? Ain't nothing you can tell me about that. I don't know how to be nothing else but a black woman. I ain't never been nothing else but that. And if you feel some type of way about it because of the the color of my skin, that's a you problem. And I can't, like she said, I can't do nothing about that. And for the record, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're black. I'm black. So if I'm flesh of her flesh and blood of her blood, we're both black. Yeah. Ta-da. The gig is up. Um, and I wanted, I, I do have hopes that I end up with a black man. I'm not like completely against, you know. Dating outside your race? I've never done it. I've dated different types of black. So you don't have to just be black American. I'll talk to a Haitian, you know, I'll talk to a uh, uh, um, Caribbean black man. I'll talk to a, a Nigerian black. I'll talk to a e Egyptian black or, you know, Sudanese. Like, I'll talk to different types of black. But I really, really got hopes of being with a black man. I really okay. want that. Okay. It's I'll just something different. I feel like black. I think it's going to work out for you. You think so? Yeah, I okay. think so. It ain't knowing what I much. know, what I know, I think it's gonna work out for you. It is. It's looking. You know, but black men have to get the shit together. You know, for a lot sure. of them. Oh, get your shit together. Get your shit together. I ain't you know? helping put nobody else shit up. And I think that's the thing that we have always like required of black women is to uplift and build up our black men. And yes, I want to do that, but I don't ha want to have to do that. Like I don't want it to be where if I don't build you up, you. You got to come build, is what I'm saying. Come build. Well, let me say this. And I'll put in, I'll come build. Let me decorate. Let me paint the walls. Let me spruce it up a little bit. But if I got, I don't want to. Come with, come with it. Come, come with something in you and you help to bring it out of me. I got on. it. I get yeah, it. I, don't, I get it. You know, and I'm just tired be, of digging. Just, just so that, you know, you're willing to help. You know, a lot of black men need a little help. Some of them hadn't kind of, hadn't been, pulled away from their mama's strings a little bit. Uh, some of them ain't gonna never be pulled away from that. Some of them gonna be, excuse my language, some of them gonna be on their mama's ditty for the rest of their lives. Those are the ones you don't want. Yeah, no, you know? I don't want that. Um, but though, you know, you-, you I want, want a black king that can lead me in yeah. his black family. Right, right, and that you you will respect enough to follow. Yeah, for yeah, sure. You know, so he's got to be, he's got to be a black man. He can't be a black fool, <laughs> you know? Just that on that. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's time for I want to know. So what do you want to know today? Huh. I want to know how old do you think is too old to have children for a black woman? I think it changes. I think it depends on your financial capability like your financial status um and health i think takes a like how well you've taken care of yourself how uh, much you've invested on the front end of things which is why i'm a big advocate for but even though i haven't done it i'm really reaching for freezing my eggs and taking necessary precautions because i don't want to look up and be like damn i wish i had done that you know what I mean? And why I'm also a big advocate for wellness, health and wellness. Like I'm working out, I'm eating better. I still make mistakes, you know, no one's perfect, but I genuinely strive. And as I've gotten older, gotten better and better with taking care of myself. Um, because I do see now what I'm seeing is a lot of people aren't having their first children. A lot of women, black women, aren't having their first children until their first child? Their first child until their later 30s and and sometimes 40, 42. So for me, because I'm in my 30-somethings, it looked like I might not have my first child till 35, maybe 37. 
Then maybe the second one come around 38, 39, maybe 40. It might be a little, I might not have the first child till 37, depending on if I have met the child's father already or not. Like, I think it just, I think, I think a, a safe and healthy range that I've been seeing though, you can go up until 42. Okay. 43 ish. Okay. But you do know that the longer you wait, the less patience you're going to have. I know. And I really don't have that much now. So I would encourage you, if you're going to have them, go and get them out of the way because um, the patience gets really thin. I want to know, do you think it makes me less of a woman if I don't have kids? No. No. Because Cause I kind of am on the fence about that as well. Everything doesn't work for everybody. Like you what know? if I don't? What if I'm just giving rich auntie vibes? That's fine. <laughs> if that's what you choose to do, and don't let anybody make but you feel. But would you any... feel like, damn? No, no. I want I... to see what. No, no, no. I have no preconceived notions of what you should or shouldn't do. You know, I used to kid you all the time. Hey, I want grandkids. I want. Yeah, I want them. If I get them, fine. If I don't she get them. She literally used to, like, bid on me and my sister's uterus. I got 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, <laughs> whoever had a first. And it's like, you're sick. And at the time, we both were young. We were like, hell no. And Tisha used to be like, you better give up your uterus. I'd be like, girl, you older. You better give up your uterus. I ain't coming up off of mine. She so used to, whoever get it, whoever give me the first boy, you get 10,000, 10,000. <laughs> Like okay. we were cattle. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I got two, so I'm out of the bed and one. I got my boy and I got my girl, and I'm done. I don't have to have any more. So what I'm telling you is you can give me more if you want, but if you don't, that's quite all right. And if your sister had not given me any, it would have still been okay. I mean, you know, I, you know, that was a humor. That was always a joke around, you know, but we always had fun with that joke. But at the end of the day, if that was meant for you, and that's what you want to find, if you decided not to have any children, that's all well and good. I mean, you know, it, if it works for you, it, it works for you. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I just, I, I'm open to it. I just don't want to give up myself. Don't. For a kid. Don't. I want to, I think that I, I understand the responsibility and the priority, and maybe I will be able to balance, but being... Not now, you're not ready. Yeah. If that's what you say, you're not ready. I'm you're choosing ready. work. Then that's it. Every time, baby. That's it. Then choose work. I mean, that's you, and it's okay. Yeah. It's perfectly fine to choose you first. And I don't know how I'll feel if I if I was in a loving. And that's it. You may meet somebody who makes you damn change your whole mindset, your whole thought process. You may meet, you may decide when, if you, you may already know them, but you, if you decide to settle down and say, hey, look, I'm ready to start, they may make you feel like you, they want to start a family with you. And you may change your mind in six months. If, it, if you do, you do, and if you well, don't, you don't. How long do you think I should wait to have a child by somebody? You have think? a long, you figure a time, you know, it, you, only you can tell when that time is right. So if I met a, a, a man today and had a, his, in six months, was like, I'm pregnant. You wouldn't feel like, hold the hell up? I probably been talking to you all along the way. To, so hopefully it wouldn't get to that six months and you decide, okay, I'm going to have this man's child. I hope that somewhere along the way, you, you know, we, we, we've had this conversation. We're dialoguing and we understand what's going on. And so, you know, you just didn't spring it on me in six months. But I think it takes a little longer than six months to get to know somebody. I think at six months you still, you know, rep you, you still got the representative. I agree. But that's a whole nother topic. All right, y'all. More of the story today is stop being racist. You see the shirt? Should put that in for the record. For the record, stop being racist. Thank y'all for tuning in to another Mommy and Me episode, another Mommy and Me Monday. We enjoy you a per usual. We hope that you enjoyed this video. We hope that you might have learned something and maybe changed your perspective a little bit on how you view either yourself, your complexion, or the others in your community and your race. So till next time, y'all, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. We're trying to get there. We're trying to get some viewers, some followers. What you said? We're looking for everybody.
who following out there? What did you say the first episode? <laughs> I said, if you're a follower, she was like, if you're a follower, we need you. We it's, need you if you're a like, follower. <laughs> that's not how you get followers. But we appreciate y'all tuning in to Mommy and Me uh, Mondays. And stay tuned. We got more coming your way. Don't forget to comment below your favorite part, what you learned, and any questions you have or topics you want us to discuss. We got you. Thank you.